Hello everybody, this is Mr. Masonette, and on today's online tutorial, we are going to practice taking different fractions and placing them in order from the smallest value to the greatest value. On the board, we have four different fractions, and notice they have four different denominators, and it can be difficult to compare fractions with different denominators because a denominator really is a unit of measurement. We would say that this unit is in sixteenths, this, these units are in eighths, these units are in fourths, and these units are in halves. So essentially, these are different size pieces, and you really shouldn't compare different size units to each other. That would be like comparing inches to miles or feet to centimeters. So what we're going to do is make sure that all of our units or denominators are in the same units. So what we're going to do is take 16, 8, 4, and 2 and find the lowest common denominator of all four of these denominators. If you were to count multiples of 2 or count multiples of 4 and count multiples of 8, you would notice that all three of these numbers would in fact hit the number 16. So we would say the least common multiple or lowest common denominator of the four denominators are 16. So we're going to change all of our units or denominators into 16s. Now notice with this fraction we did not change 16, so we're not going to change the numerator as well. We are going to keep the number 7 a number 7. And with this denominator it would take two eights to make 16, so we have to take two of these which would give us a total of 10. Because the 8 got 2 times bigger, we would have to increase the numerator by a multiple of 2 as well. And with this 4, it would take 4 of these to produce 16. So we're going to take 4 threes, and that would give us a numerator of 12. And for this 2 here, it would take 8 of these to make 16. So we are going to increase this numerator by a factor of 8. Now, because all of the denominators have the same units, we can easily compare them. We can see that the lowest number of sixteenths in this case would be seven sixteenths, and that was already listed first. But next, we will have to write eight sixteenths, and after eight sixteenths, we would write ten sixteenths, and after that, we would put twelve sixteenths last. Now, notice the first fraction that seven sixteenths came from was this one. So I'm going to put a number one right by seven sixteenths. And for 8 sixteenths, that came from 1 half, so this fraction here would go second. And 10 sixteenths is equivalent to 5 eighths, so I'm going to put that third. And of course, the largest fraction of 12 sixteenths came from 3 fourths, so we're going to put that fourth. So in ordering and comparing fractions, one strategy is to take the denominator and make sure you find the lowest common denominator, but make sure to also change your numerator by whatever factor the denominator increased, so then you can make a very precise comparison. A strategy for comparing and ordering fractions is to take all of the fractions and convert them into their decimal equivalents. Let's take the fraction 7 16 for example. To change any fraction into a decimal, you first must take the numerator, which in this case is 7, write it on the inside of the division sign, and divide it by the denominator, which is 16, which is written on the outside of the division sign. And what you have to do next to start your division is to place a decimal here, right above. And what I like to do is to put two zeros after the decimal. Because the value of 7 now looks like $7, and the answer we get on top will be something that looks like change in your pocket or money. And it's very easy, because we're used to it, to compare change or money that might be in your pocket. So let's fit 16 into 7, which actually can't fit in at all. So we're going to put a 0 for this place right here. And we can fit 4 groups of 16 inside 70, which gives us a total of 64. The difference of 70 and 64 is 6, so now we're going to take this 0 and drop it down. And we can fit 3 groups of 16 into 60, which is a product of 48, which leaves us with 12 left over. Now we can continue our division, but it's unnecessary just for comparison purposes. So let's move on to 5 divided by 8. I'm going to place a decimal here and here, and then two zeros after the decimal point. Now 8 cannot fit into 5, so we put a 0 for that place. And we can fit 6 groups of 8 into 50, which is a total of 48, which leaves us with technically two tenths left over, but we're just going to pretend it's two, just to keep the division simple. Now we're going to drop the zero down from the hundreds place, and we can fit two groups of eight into 20, which is a total of 16, and let's not worry about the remainder. We can say that five eighths is about 62 cents. Now let's take a look at three divided by four. 
4 cannot fit into 3, so we put a 0 here. Then I place a decimal, decimal, and two zeros after the decimal. And we can fit 4 into 37 times, which gives us a product of 28. That leaves us with 2. We drop our 0 from the hundreds place. And we can fit 4 groups into 20 exactly 5 times. So 3 fourths is equivalent to 75 hundredths. And 3 quarters, we should know in our pocket, would be 75 cents. And now 2 cannot fit into 1, so we place a 0 here. We put a decimal here, here, and two zeros after. So I essentially changed this problem into one dollar divided by two. And of course, we all know that we can fit two groups of 50 cents into one dollar. Now, when we take a look at these decimal values and start our comparisons, we would say that 43 cents would be the smallest value. And the fraction that 43 cents came from was 7 sixteenths. So this would be the smallest fraction in value. The next amount that would be in order would be 50 cents, and that came from one half, so we are going to place that fraction second. The third smallest would be 62 cents, and that came from 5 eighths, so I'm going to place a 3 in front of that fraction. And the largest fraction, of course, belongs to 3 fourths, because 3 fourths is equal to 75 cents, and that was the most change that we had in our pocket. So if you ever want to compare and order fractions, a good strategy is to take all of the fractions change them into money, which would be to the hundreds place, and then do your comparison.